Hey, Chris Maiden here for part 25 of Wind Waker. You're still in the Triforce quest, of course. The Japanese version of the Triforce quest was actually much worse than this. Basically, yeah, this is pretty annoying. But basically, there's this gold ship that you need to sink in the Triforce quest, and in the American version of the game, that gives you a Triforce chart when you use the grappling hook after, like on a light tile after sinking that gold ship. But in the Japanese version, that gold ship would give you a chart leading to about four more charts in a, in a chart-like sequence that eventually would result in you getting the Triforce chart. It was pretty convoluted, and it was a very clear example of padding. So, that was pretty annoying. The HD version of the game does help with the Triforce quests by making it so that some treasure chests have Triforce charts. Have Triforce shards instead of Triforce charts. But, it's only some chests, it's not all of them, like people actually wanted. And, again, it would have been an actual improvement for, for the complainers to not have the Triforce quest in the HD version at all. Like, to just have Link have the Triforce from the very beginning, since, you know, he's the hero and all. Like, the Triforce suddenly accepts him after he collects all the physical Triforce shards. So... And it's not like that was the plan all along, because the boat is surprised! when the Triforce starts glowing in Link's hand after he collects all the shards. So there's no reason he couldn't have had the Triforce just accept him and not have to get all the shards. I should have I should have fell down the waterfall from the center. I would have gotten a lot of rupees that way. He's looking at a flock of seagulls, although I can't see any. And those seagulls are usually in the Great Sea to represent areas where giant octos can surface. And they can give you, like, treasure. Again, I have a hell of a time getting giant octos to show up. Like, there's seagulls all over the place, and following them doesn't always lead you to a giant octo. So, yeah, I'm not going to be showing off all the giant octos in this playthrough. But, yeah... Something I've thought about recently is, like, you save Ariel, and, like, the whole entire game up to this point was about saving Ariel and presumably getting her back to her home island. But when you save her, the pirates just keep her on the ship. For no reason. Like, the logic is that they're keeping her from being kidnapped again, even though Ganon knows that Ariel's not Zelda by now. And I know that Link can't call the pirates on the, on his cell phone and tell them that they don't need to keep her anymore. But the same logic for keeping Ariel on the pirate ship rather than returning her home also applies to Tetra. Why can't they just keep Tetra on the pirate ship? Like, if they had kept her on the pirate ship, then Ganon would have never found her. Because, like, how is he supposed to know where exactly in the Great Sea the pirate ship would be? Yeah, I couldn't help but spoil that. I mean, come on, of course Zelda gets kidnapped. And she got kidnapped at the beginning of the game, too. Even though she's a pi- even though, well, like, she's a pirate captain, but what was she supposed to do against a giant bird? I really like this! I really like that you can break those pots that way. They arbitrarily allow you to use the grappling hook in this area, even though you're usually not allowed to use items in houses for some stupid reason. Even though you can use any item you want in the houses in 2D games, so that's arbitrary. I guess it's supposed to be realistic, like how you can't use a sword indoors in the 3D games. It's stupid. Also stupid is that slide puzzle, because it controls like utter ass. Like it's not like you can just have the cursor highlight something and is as simple as you just holding the A button to move that thing that you're highlighting over. It's more like 
every time that you move the the control stick, it moves over one of the pieces of the puzzle. And I don't remember the controls. I think the controls are inverted as well. So that's pretty stupid. And the sewers area here is pretty annoying because the L targeting system loves to target rats. Even when the rats are on the other sides of walls. So it's easy to target rats when you don't want to, because th that you can't even see. Like, you shouldn't be able to target stuff that you can't see. I mean, come on. And, like, rats can also love to surprise you. You crawl through the crawl spaces a lot. It's a maze, and it's hard for me to... Like, I don't have this memorized. It's like... You use, you use the R button to crawl. And, like, in Twilight Princess, you would just use the A button. Here, they decide to dedicate an entire button to crawling. And they also use the R button to use the shield. Which I understand that, but... They also use the R button to push and pull blocks. And I don't understand why they couldn't have just used the A button for that. What is the point of having two separate action buttons? Why can't the A button just be the action button and be a little bit more context sensitive? Like, I don't get that. Like, I guess the R button has to be reserved for the shield, so it can't be another item button. But still. This is a pretty annoying area. It's good that you don't move slower in the shallow water. Because that would have been annoying. You can actually... You can actually use a jump attack with the Megaton Hammer through the wall to hit the mallets that way. I'll describe, I'll describe it in more detail later. Something I've thought about is... Why is the foresty wind temple not called the earth temple? Like, it's weird, because the foresty... Like, the wind temple has, like, uh, grass... It has grass in it. It, it has basically the forest haven dungeon aesthetic. Only without, like, purple water and flowers. And it even has music that you'd associate with the foresty area. And yet it's not called the Earth Temple, even though it has literal earth in it in the form of ground. The only thing that makes the Earth Temple the Earth Temple is the fact that it's made of metal because it's a crypt. So it has earth in the form of metal in it. And another thing that's really backwards is that it's like the Riddo the bird tribe are obviously of the wind, but the bird girl is the earth sage, and the plant boy is the wind sage. Like, I know that the plant boy can fly too, but he flies using a leaf. Like, you'd think that he would be the earth sage. And you think that the one that can fly with wings would be the wind sage. Like, it kind of... It kind of sounds like they got it mixed up. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe they're trying to be creative and subversive. Did I attack him while actually having the hammer hit the wall? That was weird. The Big Ten hammer does more damage than the sword, so it is a good idea to attack. I don't know why they take so long to explode and give you money or hearts when they die. Like, just because they're zombies doesn't mean they should be that much that much of an inconvenience. Especially, it's especially annoying the Savage Labyrinth because you need to get them to explode for the fire surrounding the hole to disappear. So, I mean, so you have to wait for a couple extra seconds before you can go down to the floor. But yeah, now we've finally gotten the chart that requires the Cabana's Deed. Well, technically you don't need the Cabana's Deed. You can skip it using glitches, which is pretty cool. But if you're playing the game normally, then you're going to need to get 25 Joy Pendants in order to beat the game. Because you need to give the teacher 25 Joy Pendants so she can give you the Cabana's Deed. And 50 gives you the Hero's Charm. Which allows you to see the health of the enemies by L-targeting them. Because apparently you have to L-target them to see their health for some reason. 
I didn't actually mean to talk to him. So that was pretty annoying. Usually when you're sailing and it suddenly starts raining, like really suddenly, that's another cue that there's a giant octo nearby, but it just went back to not being rainy again. Like, like what? It's so frustrating finding the giant octos. You can't actually get up to Tingle a lot faster, because you can hookshot from the boat onto the post box. And you can also hookshot onto the top of that ladder. Like, you don't actually need to climb up it, which is great because climbing is really slow. I wish I had known that. How are you supposed to know that you can hookshot onto ladders? So that's annoying. Another thing you can do that's, that's pretty amusing. He's using his brother as a slave to just, just, just perpetually push and spin around this thing with his head. Tingle's messed up. Yeah. You have to use the Game Boy Advance. His, his dialogue made me think that maybe you'd have to show the Tingle Tuner to him and he'd get a reaction, but you can't. Anyway, what I was going to say is that you can actually stand on the railing near Tingle and have him translate have him translate the charts for you. And his dance will actually knock Link down off the tower, but he'll still be able to talk to Tingle from below the tower. So so the camera will actually be really panned out and looking up at Tingle with Link on the ground, and he'll be able to translate the Triforce charts from the ground. So that's a pretty funny glitch. Wish I had remembered I could have showed that off. It makes sense that he charges such a large amount to translate a map, a visual picture that you shouldn't need to translate because it's a picture of an island. Why does Link need to know the name of the island? That is so stupid. It's so arbitrary. And it's not like you can go in the exact location of a treasure and use the grappling hook on the sea and get it up. Like, you can't, you can't do that. The game will not spawn the treasure if you don't have the Triforce chart or the, or the treasure chart. Like, you can't, you can't go in the exact area that you memorize the Triforce chart to be in. So the Triforce charts are completely mandatory. I have no idea how Tingle knows how to translate Triforce charts. I guess it's a whole, like, maybe there's something mystical about how because the Tingle Tuner is a magical thing that's pretty useful. Like, it can heal you and stuff. It gives Tingle as a, as a far away assist. So, I don't know how he managed to become a Triforce chart translator. That seems like a pretty big deal, but no big deal is made of it. And again, I don't know how you can try- I don't know how you can translate a, a map. What's there to translate? It's stupid. Like, it's just there for the sake of padding. And yeah, I'm cutting past fighting all of these guys, because, like, really? You don't need to see that. Like, you know that you've already seen me fight these enemies, like, 10 million times. This is going to be a long enough playthrough as it is. The game's file select screen actually undergoes a 7 minute day to night cycle, starting at whatever time the console's internal clock is set to. So that's really cool, like, you can go to the file select screen and the background will actually be at night, or a day. I always thought that the, the time period was determined by what time it was in the game in the last file that you loaded. Like, like if it, if it was day, then it would be day. But it's actually based on the console's internal clock. I wonder how they would handle it for consoles that, that had their internal clock break. Like, I guess it would always be the same time. The game does not base the time of day on the console's internal clock, obviously, because the time passes a lot faster, because if it based it on the console's clock, then it would take forever to get to night without the song passing. 
and night would like night and day would last a lot longer you can always tell what time of day it is like what exact time of day if you're in your boat and you press right on the control pad and if you're in certain areas then it'll always be stuck at day or night and you can also look up at the sun in the sky and if it's the highest in the sky then it's new for example I did not mean to go to that room that was a silly mistake on my part I really like the look of that Triforce eagle symbol there like that's pretty nice looking the night sky stars are not part of the skybox texture they're actually polygonal vector models this is done because vector graphics are infinitely scalable and having a textured skybox would mean that it looked pixelated through a telescope those stars so that's pretty interesting and like if you go high enough above the skybox like with the mega jump code you can actually like see past it and like, it looks like you're in space but the stars aren't actually in space because the stars are actually a part of the skybox so well they're not they're not part of the texture but 